Many of you may have heard about the so-called obesity tax proposed by New York Governor David Patterson. It would add an 18% tax on the purchase of sugar-sweetened beverages like soda and sugar-added juices. No one likes to hear about new taxes, but some taxes can be good for your health. I'm Dr. Richard Baines, the New York State Commissioner of Health, and I'd like to explain why I support this tax and why it will be good for your health and your pocketbooks. Just look around and you will see that we are in the midst of an obesity epidemic. We are particularly concerned about what this means for the lifetime health of our children. It's become clear that one important factor contributing to this problem is a remarkable change in the amounts of different beverages that we all drink. Think about it. In 1970, each New Yorker drank the equivalent of about five cans of soda a week and drank ten glasses of milk along with water and natural fruit juices. Back then, overweight and obesity were not nearly the problem they are now. Today, on average, we each drink the equivalent of 11 cans of soda a week, and only six eight ounce glasses of milk. Sugar sweetened beverages are pretty much just liquid sugar. Half of the extra six cans of soda per week are sugar-sweetened soda. Drinking three extra cans of soda a week means that over the course of a year, we take in about 13 more pounds of straight sugar, which is more than 21,000 calories. When we take in more calories than we need, our bodies convert them to fat. 21,000 extra calories becomes about six pounds of fat, and that's just one year's worth. Good luck trying to hide this on an adult, let alone a child. This graph shows what's happened to our beverage drinking habits in our bodies over the last 30 or 40 years. In 1970, we each drank about 31 gallons of milk a year and 24 gallons of soda, and only a little more than 4% of children were obese. In 1985, we drank 27 gallons of milk and 31 gallons of soda. By 2005, we were drinking only 21 gallons of milk and 35 gallons of soda, and 17% of our children were obese. Today, over 34% of our children are overweight or obese. Sure, too much junk food and too little exercise also play roles in the obesity epidemic, but nutritionists and pediatricians tell us that increased intake of sugar-sweetened beverages is the single most important cause of obesity in children. In 2008, an article in the Journal of the American Dietetic Association reviewed all of the scientific information about diet and obesity in children. They said, and I quote, only one high-risk dietary practice emerged as being linked to overweight in children, the intake of sweetened beverages. Obesity is a problem we all have a stake in solving. Not only does obesity directly affect the health and happiness of many children and adults, the New York State Controller calculates that obesity causes $6.1 billion a year in extra health care costs, and that's a bill we all have to pay. For all these reasons, and especially in these tough times, Governor Patterson has asked us to do something effective about the obesity crisis. Of course, if we keep drinking the same amount of soda, we'll just pay the government 18% more and we won't improve our health. But I think New Yorkers are smarter than that. I think we can reduce our consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages. What if a family of four each just cut out one can of soda a week? We wouldn't take in so much extra sugar. We'd start to get rid of the fat. And instead of spending more, a typical family would actually save $100 because not only are low-fat milk and water better for us than sugary drinks, they're cheaper and there's no tax at all on them. With the money we save, we could buy some new jogging shoes or maybe get back on the bicycle with the kids. Our health will be better, our health care will cost less, and every family will have more to spend on whatever they want. Governor Patterson will spend the soda taxes we collect on health care, including physical activity and nutrition programs for kids. Tough times or not, this is too smart of a plan for New Yorkers to pass up. Here's to Governor Patterson's proposal to reduce obesity, and here's to your health.